Oh, shit. <laughs> There we go. All right, our first purple power slug. Yeah, yes.
All right, welcome back, everybody, to Satisfactory. I'm the Bearded OG, and in this episode, we are going to uh, do a little bit of exploration. Um, and as I showed you in the opening montage, uh, we now have a a real road. <laughs> uh, it took me quite a few hours to actually build this. And um, so, yeah, um, what I did, of course, is I, I widened the road, so I made it two tiles wide, added rails in, added in, um, well, originally I had added in power lines, and then I, a after I started adding the lights, I realized, well, I don't need the power lines because I have the lights. And actually, you know what? I want to do something different here. Um, let's grab that light, and we're going to put this one in at an angle. Uh, like I did down in the other corner. And we'll just part, put it into night mode. There we go. Um, the catwalk here is going to be for conveyor lines and for um, hypertube. And uh, when we get to that point, which we might actually get to that point in this episode. And then there's a couple things that I had to do kind of weird down that way too that I'll show you uh, when we get down that way later. Okay, so first thing is... Uh, we ha we now have enough stuff to do our next milestone. Um, I, we could either do... Uh, well, you know what? I need to do all of them. What the hell? Let's just do it. Okay, so this is going to give us batteries milestone and the reached. big power lines Pioneers and those things. can now store power for later use and span power lines across vast distances. Stored power is automatically distributed in cases of low power output. You've got the power. All right, so yeah, we can we can now store power in batteries. So if we have excess power, um, it'll do that. We'll set that up in the in the big factory. I'm not going to do that here. Uh, then we got the big power line tower, and then a power line tower with a platform on it. Okay, um, I we're going to do all of these, of course. But I think the next thing I want to actually do is logistics three, mark three. Uh, that gives us uh, 270 resource per minute, and it also gives us the big uh, storage container. Uh, we'll be doing, of course, the blueprints and the hypertubes as well. So let's do this one next. Um, and that means we need to get together uh, 200 beams, 100 pipes, and 500 concrete. All right, let's go down here. Whoop. And uh, I just recently switched my little temporary steel production thingy over to making beams because I had built up quite a few pipes. Um, so let's take all of the memes and a couple stacks of pipes because we're going to need those for some other things as well. Yeah, it's not actually it's not going to let us load this up until the, the rocket gets back, but we have everything we need for that. A little over three minutes. Okay, um, let's make uh, let's make a parachute. We have stuff for that now, so we'll go grab the cloth out of here. And I, I believe, I believe these are reusable now. They used to be consumable. That just comes on our back. Um, how do, how do I activate that thing? I currently have fly mode on. I don't use it, you know, when I'm building stuff. Uh, I only mostly use it for like screenshots and flybys and that sort of thing. I, in other words, I, I'm still doing stuff legit, but um, let's turn that off. And actually, I should keep it off normally unless I'm actually doing a flyby. I just don't think about it. Okay, so does it tell us how to activate? Slow, slows down your fall when activated in midair, but how do you activate it? You just press the, the space bar? I don't know. Let's go. Let's go up to the roof and jump off and see what happens. This will be for science. I don't remember. It's been a long time, you know, since I used this, so. Oh, yeah. Okay, so you just press spacebar. And then you can also control its direction, too. Nice. I like it. All right, so we got that done. Um, I want to I want to make the explorer. Now that we have a, a nice road that we can use to explore. I mean, the tractor 
you know, it works, but it's not super fast and it's kind of clunky. Um, so to build the Explorer, you know what? I didn't make a to-do list today. That's okay. This is just kind of kind of be a do whatever the hell <laughs> episode. Uh, so let's go to transport and let's go ahead and queue up one Explorer. All right. So we're going to need five crystal oscillators and those require uh, 36 quartz crystal per two oscillators. So that means we're going to need 72... Um, 172 plus 36 is 108, I believe. Okay. Do I have any of those already made up? I've got a few. But let's just, um, let's make some more of those, too. Alright, so that's gonna be compounds, maybe? Yeah. Alright, I'll get 108 of these made up. Alright, guys, um... We should have enough stuff now to make the oscillators. Oh, by the way, this thing came back. Let's do this next. Um, so we need the beams, uh, beams, pipe, and concrete. There we go. All right. Milestone reached. Logistics can be improved with a larger storage container and enhanced conveyor belt efficiency. Very nice. Okay, let's make five of these. Excellent. Okay, so we got our steel pipe, our crystal oscillator. Now we need to make five motors. So motors are going to require rotors and stators. So we're going to need ten stators to make five motors. Let's do that. All right, and then let's make five motors. Very good. And then finally we need to make heavy modular frames. Um, right here. So those are going to require encased industrial beams. And we need to make five of those. Uh, we need to make five of the modular frames. So that means we need to make 25 encased industrial beams. Um, okay, so let's do that. Very good. And now let's make five heavy modular frames. There we go. All right, we should have everything we need to make ourselves an explorer. There we go. <laughs> All right, awesome. Awesome, awesome. Okay, so let's see. This guy will run off of... All right, guys, I'm back. I had a little minor uh, work emergency here on a Saturday Saturday morning. Um, anyway, let's see what were we doing. Oh, we just we just made the explorer, right? Okay, so um, w uh, where do we put the fuel at in this? Oh, right here. Okay, I think this takes biofuel, but I think it also takes coal and other stuff too. Um, cool. All right, let's let's drive this thing down our new road here. Hmm. Okay, so it goes 102 kilometers per hour. I don't know what that translates into for miles per hour, but... Oh, I just realized I missed a, a paint spot there. Cool. All right, so yeah, now we have our Explorer that we can take out and, well, explore with. Uh, while we're down the road here, I want to show you a couple of things that I had to do with this build. So the first area is right here. Um... You know, with this arch thingamadoodle here uh, in the way, uh, I, what I had to do is I had to drop the catwalk down because I am planning on running um, conveyor belts along here. And so we had to do that. Um, you know, this whole road thing too, by the way, is it's not something I... I, I well, I, when I first ran it for you guys in the last episode, I hadn't really pre-planned it. I, well, I did a little bit, I suppose, but I didn't completely pre planned I guess is what I'm saying. And had I done that, I probably would have, well, I mean, we would have had a problem either way, really. But there's probably a little more room. So I probably would put the lights on the inside and the catwalk on this side instead. But then we would have had problems, now that I think about it, though, we would have had problems with that big rock outcropping over there, too. So this is probably um, actually the right way to do this, the, the more I think about it. 
Uh, but anyway, the point being is I had to drop this down here so that we can, you know, get underneath this arch thing that would otherwise, you know, be in the way. Now, here's my plan for the conveyor system. You know, we have all of the product that our, our first factory is making over there, and we're storing it over there. But I got to thinking it doesn't really make a lot of sense for us to store it over there because if we need it, then we got to go all the way back to get it. So what I'm going to do is we're going to run the uh, product to our new factory location in a, and put it in a little warehouse there so, you know, we can get to it. Now, I ran into a little bit of a challenge with this whole setup, too, because these catwalks only go, you know, at the 45 degree angle or whatever that angle is. Uh, they don't go at this this uh, shallower angle. Um, and so what I did uh, was I had to run a ramp down to here and then it, it was going to glitch into the ground. So I had to do you know level it off and then run it this way again. Plus, we have a little access here if we need it for any reason. Um, and then if you get when we got down here, though, I couldn't get the, the platform to be flush with the road at this point just because of the way the angles work out. So I had to run it down, uh, the, you know, a, a, another, you know, tick or whatever lower until we get to the next slant. And then on the next slant, it actually works itself out. So let's drive down there. Yeah, I was kind of, uh, um, well, irritated is really kind of a strong word. I, but I, I was like going, man, why did I run those damn power lines when I could have just run the lamps? But I just didn't think about it at the time, of course. Well, it wasn't that big of a deal. The only downside to the lamps is if I needed to stop and check the power, you know, you can't you can't check the power grid from here. I suppose what we could do if we had to is we could just temporarily, you know, um, oh, you can't connect more lines to that. Okay, well, then what we'd have to do is we'd have to run a line here to this. Oh, <laughs> it's too far away. Well, you get the idea, right? We would run the line here if we had to check something. You know, if we needed to check the power grid for some reason, but that's not likely something, you know, we would have to do often, if ever, while we're on the road. And I guess another thing I could do is I could put a couple of pulls in, you know, periodically or, you know, stagger them or whatever to do that. But I'm not going to worry about that unless, you know, it proves to be a, a thing where I wish that I would be able to do it, if that makes sense. Anyway, so we had another, you know, another smaller um, shallower angle here. And so when I when I ran these ramps down here, then it then it even back out again, you know, flush with the surface. So oh, okay, parachute. Um, <clears throat> so so that's that's how I handled that, and, and I'm just kind of pointing that out to you in case you guys are ever in this situation. Um, you kind of know what the deal is there, and it <clears throat> it all just is based upon how long this thingy is, you know, and how long the other thingy was. So that's how I had to work it out. All right, cool. And then, the, you know, we just kind of get down to the end of here. As you saw in the montage there, I have all the lights set to night mode. And uh, that's all the further I've gotten on this so far. We've got a, a whole lot of platform that we need to lay out. And I, I think the floor of our new factory, the, the default um, design is going to be the concrete design. Because I just, I don't know, I like it better than the, than the you know, the, the metal design. And then what we'll probably do is when we set up machines, we'll probably change the tiles that the machines themselves are on, um, you know, just to kind of add some more pizzazz to things and also as markers too. And most likely what I'll do for that is we'll use the uh, metal grip, metal grip or concrete. Yeah, probably the metal grip look there like so. That does take two uh, steel beams, so that's kind of expensive, right? Actually, if you think about it, but you know, it's not like the whole entire platform will be that. We'll just, the, where the machines sit, we'll do that. So that's the plan for that. All right. Uh, let's set this back to just normal concrete for now. Whoa! Okay! 
That wasn't planned. <laughs> Son of a bitch. All right, when this happens, you have to basically disassemble and then rebuild it because once those things go in the water, there's no pulling them back out. Uh, hopefully I got my, yeah, I got my biofuel back from that. Yeah, these don't have real, real good brakes. Hmm. Okay, that's something to keep in mind. Yeah, it doesn't, uh, certainly doesn't stop on a dime, that's for sure. All right, let's head back to the uh, factory. And um, there's a couple more things I want to do over there before we go out and actually do some exploration. Try not to run over the big mouth bird. I wonder how the speed of the Explorer compares to the hypertubes. We might have to test that out once I get them set up, unless you guys happen to know. It, it's just, it's very difficult to tell. I mean, it looks like this is going about the same speed as the hypertubes, but like I said, there's not really any way to tell until we get, get them set up and maybe test them. I, even if the hypertubes are slower, I'm still going to set them up because you know, we may not always have the Explorer readily, you know, available to us, whereas the Hypertubes will always be there. Plus, they're kind of fun. Oh, shit. I missed a spot here, too. All right, here. And I forgot to fix that other one. So let's go to Patterns. Um, oh, I noticed a bug here. Um, this is actually side dotted line. It's the one that I need, but the graphic still shows it as a corner. So it was really throwing me off. So that's why I use the double dotted line. The, the net effect is the same and it doesn't cost any more, you know, cartridges. But this is actually, if you look at the the graphic in the uh, in the right hand corner when I hover over it, it, it is only just a single side. But it looks like it's, um. oh shoot, I don't have any colored cartridges on me. Okay, well I'll have to fix that later then. I've got some, I just have them in storage. Yeah, so they got that little icon messed up. Uh, very minor bug, but maybe something I'll report if I think about it. And, you know, the other thing we could do is we could also just have the truck deliver all, all of the stuff, but I'm not really too fond of that idea just because then we'd have to set up depots on both ends and, you know, this is a permanent setup. I mean, this is going to be in place for the whole entire rest of our playthrough, so I'd rather just have it go, you know, uh, via conveyor belt. All right, let's get this out of the way. Well, can I get over that? Yeah, okay. All right, now the next thing I want to do is um, on, I, I just happen to know that on top of there, there is a purple slug. Um, I just no, happened to notice it when I was out and about doing stuff. And uh, I wanted to, of course, get that with you guys on camera. So we're just going to ramp up there. I don't know if there are any nasties up there. I guess we'll find out. Uh, but let's just get uh, this ramp here. And... Start it right here. Oh, damn it, Jim. Damn it, Jim. I'll, I'm obviously going to take this back apart when we're done. Oh, you know what? That's that's definitely not going to get us up there. Uh, unless we... Unless we zigzag it. But let's see if we can get it up there in... Just one big straight line. Hmm. have to start down a little bit lower, but I still feel like we have to go back further. I'm going to guesstimate right about here. Okay. Whoops. Oh, I don't know. Maybe, maybe I went back too far. We'll just take this up as, as high as we think it needs to go, and then we'll just use flat ones to get over there. 
Oh yeah, I did. <laughs> I did go back further than I needed to. I'm thinking maybe let's go one more. Okay, and then we're gonna just go with the normal. Uh, no, we're gonna have to go into this menu. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't aim very well either there. Okay, let's get rid of this guy. Kill these guys when they show up. Uh, are you guys going to come up this way or what are you going to do? They, their flight pattern is so irregular, you know. That's probably by design to throw us off. Let's put this right there. All right, I think we have another. Oh yeah, we have two more up here. I'm not doing a very good job there. You know what, screw this. Let's just do this this way. need to get up to there uh, which way is the the ladder there it's that way we move that right to about there that should work Oh, shit. <laughs> there we go. All right, our first purple power slug. Yay us. Very nice. Okay, and then let's just go ahead and get rid of all of this stuff. I think that's everything, right? all the further it's going to let us go. Alright, let's go research the purple slug and then we'll have the entire um, slug tree or whatever it is. Power slug tree. Uh, researched. We need, oh, we need 10 more um, frame thingies for that. Alright, let's go grab those. Those should be in one of these guys. Whoops. Yeah, I just got to think. It's like, well, it doesn't make sense for us to keep everything stored in this warehouse uh, or this factory. Since we're not really going to be doing much here anymore once we fully move over to the new location. Um, so, yeah. All right. Power slug. There we go. And this will give us the ability to... Um, make three of the overclock devices with one slug and give us maximum overclocking ability. Okay, cool. So that's done. Um, is there anything else over here that we should be... Well, actually, before we mess with that, um, let's get hypertubes going next. So I'm going to need to make 50 encased beams, grab some more pipes, and grab some... Uh, copper sheeting. So let me get that stuff all gathered up and or made. All right. We should have everything we need for this. So we'll put in the copper sheeting, the pipes, and the industrial beams. And we'll get our hypertubes. Milestone reached. Fixit Incorporated has processed and incorporated frequent pioneer requests for pipe based personal transport. Introducing Hypertubes, safe, aesthetic, adaptable, fun. 
Enjoy a view of your hard work as you soar through incredibly tight turns. Build them today. <laughs> Note, Fixit Incorporated is not responsible for any harm caused by irresponsible use of this product. Uh-huh. Okay. All right. So it looks like we have everything we need um, for the final uh, Tier 4 blueprint. Um, I'm sorry, the Tier 4 milestone, which is the blueprints, which is great because we are certainly going to be making use of that. I just got to grab some more frames, but we have to wait for the rocket to get back before we can do anything more with that. Let's take a look and see where we're at with research here. Um, so hostile organism detection requires whatever that circuit board thingamadoodle is. Um, do we have one of those? I thought I had looted some of that stuff at one point. Uh, yeah, I did, but that's that. This is different. That's that's these are actual circuit boards, but whatever this wants, um, is uh, that's a high speed connector. Okay, so we don't have access to that. I don't think we can make it yet either. Um, if we could, it would be under electronics, and yeah, we can't. We can't even make circuit boards yet, actually. Okay, so uh, what was the other thing that we could do? That'll give us another hand slot. We should do that. So we need five DNAs and th uh, another 300 steel channel thingamadoodles. Just grab all the steel channel thingamadoodles. Do we have any DNAs in here? No, but we got a lot of stuff to make DNA. Um, let's grab some paint cartridges too so I can fix that stuff if we go back that way. All right, so we need to make five DNAs. And we should be able to research that now. And that gives us another hand slot. Beautiful. Okay, so now we can have um, probably the chainsaw in the fourth slot. Uh, because these I only use on occasion. I use the chainsaw a little bit more frequently. Nice. Okay, that takes care of that research. Um, so alien organisms is almost done. We just have this one last thing to do, which we won't be able to do until we get the that connector thingamadoodle. All right, Caterium. Um, stun rebar. Not really that interested in that, really. But uh, I would like Mark III power poles, which requires 50 high-speed connectors. Okay, um, so we, we certainly can't do that yet. What is this? This is a power switch. We could do this. It re requires 50 AI limiters. What do those require to make? Uh, yeah, that that's very affordable. So yeah, let, let's do that. Okay, let's research the power switch. Very nice. All right. This requires shit we can't make. A smart splitter. Oh, we definitely want this. Okay, so we need 10 more AI limiters. All right, so you know what this means then is... What we can... Instead of running like a shit ton of individual conveyor belts, you know, to transfer all this stuff down to us... What we can do is we can just throw it all on maybe two Mark III lines at 270 per minute. And then when it gets to the other end, I think, I'm pretty sure we can use a smart splitter to, um, to divvy it out. Let's, uh, let's go to logistics. Oh, we need an AI limiter for that. I, I just want to take a quick look at it. Okay, so, right, okay, so what we can do is tell this what to put, you know, to, to route out the left output, the center output, and the right output. And it it's not giving us any options right now just because we don't have anything connected to it. But if we connected, you know, a line 
to it, then those would show up in those drop down menus. I don't want to mess with that right now, but uh, that's really good because here again, it's going to save me from having to run, a, you know, a whole bunch of separate lines. Um, we have, oh, well, okay, so we can split up to three products with a smart splitter. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and the three up there, eight, nine, ten. So we have a total of ten products that this factory is making. Um, so that means we're going to need a total of three lines and three smart splitters. Either that or I could... Yeah, I think I will do it that way just because that gives us room to expand on two more products if we if we wanted to do that down the road. That'll give us a total of the ability to do 12. Um, so, But we'll only have to run three mark three lines all the way down there rather than you know 10 individual lines or or whatever so i like that that was really good all right what else um so that was caterium programmable splitter hmm okay i don't know i don't even know what this did does i've never i never got far enough along in update five to use those so that'll be interesting to see how that works but we can't make it right now because it requires whatever this is a supercomputer okay so that's as far as we can go with caterium mycelium um yeah let's do an expanded two belt we just need to make 50 cloth for that i have um 41 and we'll just grab some mycelium to make nine more thingies of cloth oh i need biomass for that too all right um let me just go get some uh, biomass real quick because everything I don't have biomass itself stored I guess maybe I should store a little bit of that but um, you know because I turn it all into biofuel I don't I don't want to turn um, mycelia into biomass because it's pretty rare relatively speaking all right we just needed to make nine more of these I think right or no yeah whatever nine more yeah okay there we go all right so we were on mycelia let's research this and that gives us another hand slot amazing and we'll put our detonator in there love it okay that's gonna be really handy for switching quickly switching stuff in the out in the field especially like when we're getting attacked all right this is synthetic polyester we can't do anything with that until we start making plastic um toxic cellular modification i mean i'm guessing that this maybe knocks a critter out without killing it and normally i would be okay with that because I don't like to kill stuff if I don't have a reason to, but I do have a reason to kill them because we want their giblets so that we can make DNA. So, unfortunately, we're not going to be very humane about that. Just the way it is. Okay, medical properties. Uh, we need 10 staters for that. Let's do it. Okay, let's research medical properties. I don't even remember what this opens up, but we're going to find out, aren't we? A vitamin inhaler. What does a therapeutic inhaler? So what do these do? Just heal us better than the normal one? I guess. Do I have five raspberries? I do. Okay. And then... Um, Medicinal inhaler requires a bacon and an animal protein. Uh, bacon and animal protein. Okay. Now, if we go over here. So the protein inhaler... doesn't tell us what what they do um do we have like um a th 
thingy here. Equipment building vehicles, parts. No, that would be equipment, right? Okay, medicinal inhaler. Oh, they're just alternate recipes. Oh, I see, okay. Yeah, because yeah, no, because the inhaler restores all of your health, so there couldn't be like a more powerful version of it. So these are just alternate recipes. I gotcha. Okay. I'm picking up what you're putting down. All right. Well, that's cool. They all they all do three, well, three per minute if you were automating them. Nifty. All right, guys. Um I, if, if it hasn't become <laughs> obvious to you already, uh, we're not we're not going to get out and do exploring in this episode. It's just it hadn't worked out that way. Uh, we we will do we are going to explore one thing before we end this episode, and then I promise you, in the next episode, it'll be we'll do a full on exploration episode with our explorer. Uh, but we just don't have time to do it in this one. Um, but we, except for one thing, we will we will explore uh, a nearby cave right before we end today. Uh, so let's just keep going through here and do as much of this as we can because, you know, I mean, arguably I should have done some of this stuff sooner. But, you know, here's the other thing, too. And, and I've had a couple comments from you guys about, well, you should do this next or you should fast track this. And, you know, I, I don't disagree with that if I was in a hurry. But guess what? I'm not in a hurry. <laughs> I'm just having fun with this game. And we're, we're doing it as we do it. And, you know, just relaxing and not trying to rush anything. Um, yeah. So anyway, enough said about that. So let's see, nutrients. This uh, let's do this right now. Nutritional processor, and that just gives us another alternate recipe inhaler, I guess. Right? We need ten um, barrel nuts. Okay. All right, that's um. I mean, that's a little underwhelming, <laughs> if you ask me. But whatever, it's it's all good. Okay. Um, I I suppose where the, it could be useful is you know whatever region you're in. Some of those things are easier to collect in in other regions than not. But I mean, collecting ten barrel nuts is pretty damn easy to do no matter where you are. So it's all good though. All right, so we've got these two finished. Um. What is what do we need to do for quartz? This is the resonance application. I have no idea what that does. Plus, it requires a hundred novelists just to even research. So, you guys, let me know in the comments if that's actually worth doing. It. I I don't know why it would be worth doing. Um, this we could do, but it requires a lot of expensive stuff that I think I'd rather wait until we're automating those things. So we're gonna hold off on that. And same thing here. We can't even make this yet because we can't make the circuit ports for it. So that's all the further we can go with quartz. So let's take a look at sulfur. Um, this will give us another hand slot. We definitely want that. We need a hard drive to do compacted coal, a hard drive to do fuel, and plastic to do smokeless powder. All that stuff we can't do until we get into oil. But we can do this one. So um, let me make up 50 encased beams and... Do I have a hundred gunpowder? I do. Look at that. Okay. And also, you know what I'm gonna do too is let's just make up. Oh, never mind. Okay. I'm gonna put a couple things uh, in here, like the proteins. We don't need those any longer. We'll put the bacon in there. I don't think we need the AI limiter. Just trying to make a little space, get a little space back here. Mycelium we'll put over here. And then this little bit of extra bio stuff we'll throw in here. Okay, so that gives us some room back. All right, what am I doing? I'm making... Um, I'm making 50 in case beams and we already have the gunpowder. Let's do it. Okay. Let's go here and research another tool belt slot. It's a beautiful thing. 
cool. So we have, I, I think that's the last slot we can do, but I don't have anything else to put in there at the moment until we get more equipment anyway. So, but we got it out of the way. That's great. Okay, let's, uh, I think we're done uh, at the moment for everything that we can research. Everything else we have to wait until we can advance further. Um, or in the case of this anyways, I don't really care about that. I might do it eventually just for the, you know, the sake of completion, but it's not, not a priority right now. What is this thing? A bullet guidance system. It requires 500 of whatever those, those things are. Um, how do I get it to stay there so I can... It doesn't want to stay there. All right, well, whatever that long rectangular thing in doodle is, it looks almost like a level or something. Uh, we need a bunch of those, so that's down the road, I'm sure. I'm going to put a couple things away, and then we're going to go explore that nearby cave before we wrap up today's episode. All right, guys, uh, before we take off, let's go ahead and um, do our final Tier 4 milestone which is the blueprint designer that's awesome so we should have everything for this all right is Ada not going to do her usual spiel that's interesting I think that's the first time ever that I can think of that we've accomplished a milestone and Ada didn't say something. How bizarre. All right. Okay, so that finishes Tier 4, and we, we are pretty much finished being able to accomplish milestones until we complete Phase 2, uh, which means we need to make 500 of these structural thingamadoodles and a hundred of these whatever the hell those things are <laughs> um let me see the can we even make those in here we pro no i think we need probably an assembler to make those yes so we need the assembler to make the versatile framework and the automated wiring And I don't think I'm going to, I'm not going to mess with that here. Um, that, that'll, those will be uh, two of the first things that we'll make at our new location, which is going to be set up uh, for steel production to start with. So yeah, we're pretty much finished with milestones for the time being until, you know, we get to the point where we can start automating those things. All right, guys, let's go check out this nearby cave. And, uh, I actually knew this cave was here, but just never have gotten around to doing anything with it. So I figured we'd check it out now. That's, uh, yeah, this is the entrance to the cave. Okay, I have, um, uh, we're going to use shotgun in here because it's close range. Because there's probably spiders or something nasty in here. There's whatever that is. Ooh, this is more substantial than I thought. We've got a blue slug. Okay, there's a spider. Grab this. Oops. I figured this would just kind of go under and out the other side, but there's more. Well, okay, I guess it does just kind of go under and out the other side. Yeah, this is just at the other end of our road. Okay, well, that wasn't uh, that wasn't all that fancy schmancy. Um There isn't any 
like mycelium or anything I can harvest in here, huh? Mycelium, I think, is normally in the form of mushrooms. Okay, well, that was uh, a little anticlimactic. <laughs> wasn't that hard, but it is. At least we got it done and we got a blue slug out of the deal, so I can't complain too much about that. Grab some more barrel nuts. All right, guys, so, yeah, this is... Uh, we're going to go ahead and wrap things up here, and then, like I said, we will go exploring come hell or high water uh, in the next episode. That is the plan. Um, I might... I might work a little bit on starting our the conveyor uh, road. Well, not the road. We already have the road, just the conveyors themselves uh, to the new location. Mm, I don't know. I'll think about it. I might. We might do. I, I'm not going to do all of that on camera. I might at least start it because some of you probably want to at least see some of that. But we also need to build a, a warehouse on the other end to store all this stuff. Uh, we need to do that, and and then. Um, you know, the first big project in the new location, of course, is going to be uh, to get our big coal plant, you know, coal power plant. This is just our little mini baby one here uh, going so we have power to support all of the cool stuff that we're going to do in the new location. With that being said, thanks everybody for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. And if you did, please hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, shout out the video. We'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.